Hello, <laughs> this is Prudence in the Drunken Kitchen with my first installment in a really long time with my friend Mary Jo here in Minnesota. And she is going to make something for us today. What are you going to make? I'm going to make meatloaf and mashed potatoes. Wow, that's a substantial. <laughs> I suppose you're having this for dinner tonight? Well, maybe we are. Oh, we are. <laughs> <laughs> That is Mary Jo's little baby girl, Petunia. What do we feed? Petunia. We, because she's an old dog and she has um, urinary tract and um, problems. So this is what we give her. Yeah, let's see if that keeps it from. Oh, it's not even high enough to do it, but you yeah. never know. Turn it back off as well. Yep. We'll put this wooden spatula there that yep. way. Yep. It, it actually does. It kind of um, breaks the bubbles. Yep. And now we got the potatoes going and the spoon just in case it spills over. <laughs> I'm hoping it goes up that high to see if that spoon trick Well, we really could works. turn it way up and see. <laughs> see. That, I mean, we can turn it up to high. Well, and then it'll, it may not be enough water, quite That's frankly. what I was thinking. It may not, or the potatoes, because you need all that starch in there to make foam. We'll just but, boil all the water away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell me about it. I've done that. Uh, I had a fire in here. Oh, I, hey, I'm notorious for kitchen fires. I haven't had one here yet, but I've had quite a few. <laughs> there we go, our potatoes. Ooh, that is a very pretty colander. Cream cheese, I've never done that. I've done sour cream and not cream cheese, but I do use heavy whip. I like the consistency of it better. I do, I like it. I don't drink milk, so I don't buy milk. Exactly, that's all I ever have too. Probably use maybe half of this or a third of it. I just use it. That eyeball technique of yours? Well, I have to see what it looks like. Was it, did you use all the cream cheese? Was no, this full? I use, oh, no, it, it was wasn't like, full. It was about like maybe a little more than a third. So, you know, maybe you're looking like a third of a cup mm -hmm. and a third of a cup of uh, sour cream as well. Yeah, and we're not advocating any of these brands that you might be seeing here. It's what I've got. It's what she has. You People are welcome to use whatever brand is their favorite. And we are not sponsored by anyone. And God know who would sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this amateur cooking show with Prudence and Mary Jo here. Thank you. Thank you for being on my show. Like I said, these potatoes, once they're, they're you know, because you cook them and then you cook them again. So, um, oh, you, you're going to put them in the oven. I'm going to put them in the oven. Oh, so they're like... They're like twice baked potatoes only. They're mashed. Without the, um, you know, potato skins. Yeah. But I like this recipe because it um, it's really rich, so you don't need gravy or anything. You know, you can put butter on it. You put a little cheese on top. Is that little, Parmesan? Little Parm. Parm. Nice. Well, you got cream cheese, and then you've got sour cream, and heavy cream and cheese, and it's just delightful. <laughs> so I'm here. I have to get in this film sometimes. Look, she's got a nice wine apron there. I don't have an apron. I have I many. Like I have many. It's this wine what? therapy. Oh, you got everything wine related. I do. People nice. just buy me things because they know I like wine. So. <laughs> That's why I like you, Mary Jo. <laughs> That's why we're here. That's right. In the drunken kitchen. I've got like 
two and a quarter pounds of ground beef, 75, 25, because the real lean stuff doesn't work well for meatloaf. It doesn't stick together, I found. No, it, but mm. for the meatloaf, I put in a little Worcestershire, a little soy, a little steak sauce, um, some ketchup or chili sauce, whatever you prefer, a little onion, and a couple eggs. Oh, interesting. It's a little different than what I made, but you know. I think everybody makes a different formula. So we just, mm -hmm. this well, is what my mother, grandmother, aunt taught me to do. So that's how I do it. I know people put bread in it and I know they uh, put I other do. things in it. I put in soda crackers. And I buy these because they go stale on me before I can use them up. So I use these little stacks. You know, I obviously learned how to make meatloaf from my mom too. And my mom's foreign. Yeah. So she did things kind of different. Like we never put ketchup in ours. And the, the Worcestershire sauce, it sounds good. I mean, I use Worcestershire and soy and roast. I never thought to put it in my meatloaf. Well, it just um, adds... No, add some sauce. flavor. Yeah. Especially the tangy sauce. Is this like A1? Yes. Oh. But it's, you know, the... Uh, that other brand. The brand that, um, <laughs> you know, non-brand. <laughs> pay all that much for. And you see my right. precise measurements here. Oh, yes. This is like exactly how the best chefs cook. We don't, we don't use recipes. We just wing it. We eyeball, eyeball it. <laughs> <laughs> and every time it's a little different because maybe you forget one of those ingredients. Or At least maybe I you did. add a little more of something. Exactly. And you decide to use what do you use in the bacon for? I put it on top. Oh, see, I haven't ever done that. See, that's this? what my mother used to do, so that's what I do. That's why I like doing the Prudence in the Drunken Kitchen because you get ideas that you know, other ways to cook things that possibly you know you haven't tried yourself, and it might you know, well, and that's why I like cooking shows so much because. Mm. I watched them do things that I'm thinking, oh, okay, I haven't thought of that. Exactly. I have to try it with soda crackers because that's another thing I've never done. I've always used breadcrumbs. Sometimes I make my own breadcrumbs, but. Yeah, I do too. And well, the traditional Jimmy, loaf pan. Jimmy goes, I have a metal one. I prefer the glass. I, for years, have been making mine just in a in the middle of a, just a big pan, like a pizza pan or something. So it's not, it doesn't have any walls. It's just the meat sitting there by itself. Well, usually, not usually, but if I was making it for a big crowd and I was using, you know, like twice as much, I would use a bun pan and oh. then you get, it cooks more evenly because of the poles in the middle. Exactly. So and then it's, it's spread out too right so um well that that resolves it and then you don't have to cook it longer because i every time i've made a you know a bunch of meatloaf i've always had to cook it forever because well, you know, it's like a big compressed unit of meat like that perfect and this is what my mother did. She always put bacon over the top. Everybody loves bacon. It's its own food group. And I mean, it's not like it's not fatty enough, but it's um, certainly uh, when there was, I grew up, I had four brothers and a sister. And so she would always put six pieces of bacon on so that everybody got one. <laughs> Because she didn't want us fighting over the stupid bacon. Oh, that's so funny. I had seven kids. That would not have worked in my house. I'd be like, you're lucky. If you get the bacon, you're just the lucky one. Yeah, or you'll have to take turns. <laughs> that's right. The, the person who really wanted the bacon would make sure they were the first at the meatloaf yeah. to hunk off their portion. <laughs> oh, I didn't yeah. put the onions in. Oh. Oh, well. It, it doesn't need onions now. You put them in the potatoes. 
I'll put them somewhere. Put them in their fridge for now. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not even the one drinking the wine. It's done now. I'm not gonna over mix it just to add some onion to it. So is that another thing that you found that you need to not mix that meatloaf too much? Yeah, it. that's one of the reasons it falls apart. Oh. Is that it's, um, it's over... Needed. Yeah, or, or whatever you want to call it, processed. Uh -huh. So we don't... Um, do it till it's just together. Right. That's another trick I didn't know. I'm figuring maybe an hour. Oh. Mm -hmm. We'll check it. Do you stick a meat thermometer in it? Not while I'm cooking it. No, uh huh. You don't I, just leave it in there. I check it. Our temperature. Okay. Oh, 155. But isn't that considered cooked, or does it have to go to 165? I would say 165 because of the density. Yeah. I'm gonna let it rest for 15 minutes. I think sometimes that helps with keeping it together. Uh, it reabsorb the juices. Right. And oh, look how easily it came right out of there. Wow, I'm gonna have to say mine never came out that easy. <laughs> Spatula is is really this is really a handy thing. Oh wow, that is handy. I went one um, Father's Day. My son took me to a cooking class, and that was the, was the um, little thing that you got. Yep. So what, I've been looking at this thing the whole time. Is it like a for putting your? Oh, look at that! Look at that! Not coming apart. It has stuck together. Yeah, no kidding. So this is an interesting thing you have going on here. That's not a shock hazard. No, um, <laughs> pull it out. It's toast tongs. Oh, and you just put them in there? I was... Well, I just, I just keep them in there because that's where I use them. Oh, I thought that was a, a, a shock hazard to put something metal in your toaster. Well, I take it out when I turn it on. <laughs> I mean, you don't leave it in there. No, I don't, because then what's the point? It's too hot. Uh, so, I haven't had a toaster like this since probably I live with my mom and dad. I have the toaster, toaster oven. oven. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to have steamer. Oh, cooks in the bag. Bird's eye. Cooks in the bag. Neck I didn't look at it quite that well let's see those are pretty fancy tongs yeah I like I like utensils let's stand for one minute before you open it it's probably a safety thing yeah so I bet you it's the steam that you got to worry about yeah you gotta let it let it be yeah because if you go to open that right now it'll go your face will fall off <laughs> <laughs> there it goes turns to eight this tear here. Yeah, I got that for my birthday. I don't trust things that say tear. I know. Yeah. Plus, like with my arthritis, I don't, I can't really do much. Well, at least you're, you have kitchen scissors. We have scissors that only have a tip about this far that cuts, and the other part of it doesn't. Oh goodness! I know, and then they come apart. So every time you're trying oh, to cut, done. the one thing falls off. Yeah, and I I love these. Those are oh, Daddy's does that too, but his is always falling off. But it doesn't cut all the way to the bottom like yours. Well, this uh, is the, the that's so that suits. you can use it as just a <laughs> like a stab somebody. Yeah, like a shank. <laughs> if you're in prison, it's a shank. <laughs> Oh, 
that's too funny. <laughs> We had switched to using paper plates at my house because when you have 10 people in your house, that's a lot of plates. So we switched to paper plates years ago. But that kid, when he had to do the dishes, because I always had dishes from cooking, because I always cooked. He was like, Mom. And I was like, you can tell they're going to say something that they're afraid to ask you because of the tone of their voice. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, yeah. what, Charles? And he was can we switch to paper cups, too? Ah. <laughs> like, what, Charles? What a good idea, you know? I know. He's like, I know. It's like the dishwasher is always just jammed full of cups. And I was like, I know. But if you only use one cup a day, it wouldn't be that way. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know... It was very nice of you to do an entire meal and share it with me. Okay. All right, here we go. The lovely cook who has made all this delicious food. Thank you for watching Prudence in the Drunken Kitchen with Mary Jo. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash that bell. I will edit this so <laughs> like the, the tiny little drop on the floor <laughs> that may not be in it <laughs> it's who i am it's, if i don't it's spill i'm not yes that's all right we know we are cooking in a real kitchen because there's food on the floor <laughs> right